Well, good evening, everyone. I am delighted to welcome you to our weekly Mission Possible team call. And I, as I was looking at our, our um, mission earlier this week, as I was looking at our mission earlier this week, and I'm hearing some background noise. I, I think I have everybody muted. Try it again. Okay. And maybe if you haven't muted your line, if you could mute. If you are not muted and you would mute, because I'm hearing some really scratchy noise, and we need a good, clear call. So mission, our mission, our team mission uh, for us as a Mission Possible team is that we are a growing team of inspired individuals. Do you guys feel, feel inspired? Because I think we are. We're inspired individuals, agents for change, dedicated to creating a healthier, more prosperous life for as many as possible now and in future generations. And I love thinking forward, forward thinking. That's our team mission. The Juice Plus mission is inspiring healthy living around the world, and we are doing that every single day. And so, I'm just going to invite us again. We're in January. We're just starting 2018. We've got, we're excited about our year. But just again, I said this earlier this month on one of our calls, but I think it bears repeating. We stop to consider what is going on in our culture with our Juice Plus business right now. It's pretty amazing. Um, I remember hearing Sean Hopkins say on the Pajama Regional that I think it was. 15 or no 20 of our 26 countries that we do business in had record businesses in 2017. We've done 15 billion dollars in sales since the beginning of our company in the 70s, but we're projected to hit a billion dollars a year in sales by the year 2000 and then to go to that annually. If you've ever said, I'm wondering if I'm in the right place at the right time, I would say that now is the right place at the right time. And just the sheer numbers that we're seeing of the people who are engaging in our business right now, um, I think there was some 5,000 people that participated in the Pajama Regional, some 6,000 representatives that are participating in the 90-day game plan that were cross lines or working right now. I mean, I could go on and on. So I would say right place, right time, put a big check mark by that and say, I want to be a part of that. And so then um, for those of us who are really committed, and I would say if you're on this call, I, I feel like you are committed to growing your business, to touching and changing people's lives. For those of us who are really committed, now, now, not only now is the time, but there is a way that we need to be looking at it, and it's not just about time management. We talk about so much about time, and we only have so many hours in a day, and I recently heard Catherine Lee say on one of her trainings, it's not time management, it's choice management. And I hope you might write that down if you possibly can and think about choice management. What are your choices every single day regarding your business. So when we heard that, and when we heard some of the training at the Pajama Regional, one of the particular things that really resonated with all the leaders had to do with time blocking. And even if you heard this before, since we're all kindergartners, right? Every one of us are kindergartners, whether we want to admit it or not. And we all need to be reminded of the right things and good practices. So we're gonna talk about time blocking processing time, using your time wisely tonight, because as we begin this year, this is a good time, perfect time to have this kind of conversation. And one of the things that Kim McCall said that uh, really resonated with me, because I've experienced this personally, but not everybody has, if you truly understood the power of residual income, you would walk through a brick wall to get it. Residual recurring income and we want to help you do that this evening personally for me just my story I've had every single month a check from this company for nearly 34 years a check that allowed me to take vacations and still get paid sleep and still get paid play with my children and grandchildren and still get paid or care for elderly parents and still get paid every single month that is residual income 
So often when people first get started in our business, they say, how much time do I have to invest? Or how much time do I need to invest to spend, or rather spend in order to make my Juice Plus business work? How much time do I have to spend? Well, we wanna reframe that and say, how much time do I get to invest to build a successful business? The definition of spend is to use up, wear out, or exhaust. The definition of invest, to commit, to in order to gain, to devote for future advantage or benefits. Time, as we know, is one of our most precious commodities, and it's a limited resource. But we all have the same amount of hours every single day, and it's whether how we use them that matters. So no matter if you want to be a national marketing director, if you're brand new and you see that as a goal with its benefits and, its, and, and all the things that go with that, or you want to build a strong income base, it all works together, no matter where it is. Let me just say, especially if you aspire to be a national marketing director, your path will not be easy, <laughs> but it'll be fun, it'll be memorable, and it'll be worth it. And you'll be so glad that you did it. And one of the things that uh, we want to get clear on is that no NMD that ever came before had extra time to spend. I've seen some of the busiest people I know be build a national marketing director position. They made their time to invest in their business. So one of the things that we hear people say all the time is, I don't have enough time to do this, or I don't have enough time to do that, or, I'm, or another little statement or a banner we like to say is, I'm too busy. Well, from now on, I want to ask you to reframe that verbiage and that thinking to, I didn't make it a priority. We will do what's a priority in our lives. And so again, it's, it's going from time management to choice management. And I just had an aha wake up moment this weekend that I had not made something very important to me a priority. And so I had to rethink all of what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna encourage you guys to think about priority instead of saying I'm too busy or I don't have enough time. In other words, I didn't make it a priority. So BJ is gonna come and share with us. We're gonna, we've got some tips for you that I believe and hints that are really gonna help you work through some of these things. Welcome BJ. Thank you, Sharon. Um, some of the tips that I'm going to be sharing with you, you probably already know, but it's so great to be reminded sometimes. So it's, you want to be sure that they're clear on your priorities and that your family understand exactly what those priorities are and you're ready to roll up your sleeves and you want to make that time to invest in your business. So the first tip is, as I said, to make sure that your family and yourself, you're very clear on your goals and your dreams. Each of you share, maybe you get a vision board. Um, you think about the times that you're, you know, what do you want to do about your health, your time, your finances? Um, do you have boundaries set on that? Are you, are you protecting yourself, protecting your family? And your family should have values for the time that you're going to invest in your business because it can change their lives forever. So we're going to spend a few more minutes and I'm going to give you about eight tips. So that was the first one to make sure your family is clear. The second tip is if, um, and these are simple things that I found interesting and some of them that I wasn't even doing. So the first one, the next one I'm going to talk to is about how about when we go grocery shopping? How many of you do your grocery shopping online? Do you know that when you go to the grocery shop, you can spend at least an hour? And I may go two or three times a week. I honestly do because I really don't like to go grocery shopping. Uh, so I don't always buy for the week. So if I would just really manage buying my groceries online, I could be saving as much as three hours a week. So that's number one tip or number two tip, actually. Number three, the average American spends about three hours every day watching TV. Are any of you guilty of that? So when I decided to be a national marketing director, the first thing that I did was I exchanged my TV for PVC. 
As Ron Jakovec has always said, there's no PVC in TV. So if you take those three hours every day that you're watching TV, two and a half to three hours, just think of the investment that you can make in your business every day. Things would begin to change very quickly. And another interesting statistics that we have right here is that when you um, measure the happiness of people, most people are the happiest that do not watch TV because TV is very negative. So you can take away that negativeness in your life and be happier. That's another great point. And the next step would be, or next tip is, we always are wanting to stay healthy. It's a big part of what we do. And we wanna be the role models. So when you're making that time for exercise and doing activities, you might want to listen to recordings, listen to videos, um, listen to some trainings. We have some very valuable trainings in YouTubes and recordings. And if you're out jogging and walking, that is truly the best time to do personal development. So you really want to enhance your personal development. Tip number six would be, um, most people are very productive in the morning. That really is your most productive time. So try turning off the TV or your smart devices earlier in the evening, maybe an hour or two earlier. Go to bed a little bit earlier in the evening. Get up very early in the morning and allow that extra time to just refresh, review your business, take the time to have un uninterrupted silence, which is what I love most about my mornings is that quiet time when I can just be alone with my thoughts and think about what I plan for the day. It can truly help you be so much more productive. The next tip is a big one for a lot of people, and that is to stop scrolling. You know, we can use Facebook as a social media tool to really help drive our business forward, but it's so easy to start scrolling and looking at what other people are doing, and it can just kind of just bring you right in and you lose all track of time. And it, there's a statement that says, if you didn't have ADD, attention deficit disorder, before you started scrolling in Facebook, you certainly were going to have it when you got started. So be smart about your time that you're spending on Facebook and make sure that it's productive time, it's action time towards building your business. The next tip would be learn how to say no so that you can say yes to the right things. Say no to the things that don't serve you um, and really interfere with your goals and your objectives and where you want to be. And that'll allow you the opportunity to say yes to those important things that you should be doing or want to do. So our process to hitting a goal is that you're going to be making some sacrifices. And so if you're very clear on what those sacrifices will be, it's gonna be okay. The last tip is really never recreate the wheel. We have an amazing resource. We have an amazing company. We have an amazing system that works. So use them. Don't try to reinvent them. And then when you're starting to create your calendar, um, it's like investing in your dreams. So you want to fill those times on your calendar that you're not going to be able to do your business. So like sleeping hours, your working hours, your meal times, those other things that you're a priority or things that you know you're not going to be able to work in your business, be sure and put those on your calendar first so that you've got that time blocked out. And remember, super busy people have about 40 hours a week that they can actually work on their business, prioritizing what you will do and what you will not do and if you think about it, if you just take one quarter of that time and you redirect it towards your business and say that's two hours a day for top five days a week, that's only 10 hours. Can you imagine what you could achieve? And here's a couple of extra hints. Working on your business daily is important. So if, if it's more effective to work an hour a day instead of choosing to work seven hours in one day. Because if you just choose one hour a day, 
it will help you enhance your passion. And so you may want to work a little bit more than just one hour a day. So that's a simple way to look at doing your daily um, important things. Another way is to, um, and this is really important, is to let your team and your family know when your business hours are and when you're busy with your task, and then say that's your office hours. So they know when they can reach you, they can send you a message, they can send you an email, and they know that you're going to respond. It's not necessary for us to be available 24 hours a day. So if you schedule your office hours, you're going to have, you know, your business time, but then when it's time for family, you're not going to get those interference or those uh, messages that, uh, that interfere, excuse me, with the time that you want to be with family. And the other hand is use time blocking to balance necessary planning and actual work. Time blocking each week also blocking life happens to recoup time when the unexpected arises. Back to you, Sharon. Thanks, BJ. And I have to tell you, I did this naturally some years ago when I had office hours. And you guys know I'm in the office Mondays and Thursdays. You know that. That's when I'm fully on calls and answering and coaching. Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I have other uh, commitments. But I'm also... I'm talking to people about, I'm living my life and I'm shining a light for health and hope. So it doesn't mean I'm not doing Juice Plus those days. So you have to come to terms with when are you doing certain things that allows you to build your business. So I just want to give you a few more hints on how to protect your time. Uh, one of the things that I've been very clear with my family and they know this I, and with you guys, I am be unapologetic about protecting your time. You do not have to apologize for what you're doing. So be open with your schedule, about your schedule with your family and your friends. It's, this is so important that other people realize that you do have a business, that you do have priorities, that you're working on your dream. I always love what Jim Rohn used to say about, um, for people, especially people who are working this part-time, he said, I'm working part-time on my dream you know, on my mission, on my dream, so that I can do other things. So let people know what you're doing. One of the things that I feel like that we have really gotten messed up in the last few years, that this is a hint, we should do one thing at a time and finish it. <laughs> we generally are trying to do three different things at one time and nothing gets done very well. And then you look back and you were like, what did I say? What did I do? Well, how did that happen? So do one thing at a time and finish it. Always do the hard stuff first. I make a list most every single day. I have a weekly list, but most every single morning when I sit with my quiet time, I make another fresh list of everything that I needed to do for that day, and I get the hard stuff done first. And then you are going to have to practice shutting down distractions. Whatever those distractions are for you, you will. It's a practice. You don't just do it one time and think you've accomplished it, but it becomes a discipline. Turn off notifications. Um, close your apps, put your phone on vibrate if you need to for certain things. Uh, for some people, they may need to go to a quiet place or leave their house if they want to get something done. I know some people go to the library and get some work done or they go to Starbucks. To me, that would be another big distraction, but mm -hmm. I need quiet. I need, I need no distractions around me to get things done. So whatever it needs, you all need to do. And I'm definitely, um, Schedule time for flexibility, and that's another area that I learned. Like for me, Fridays have become what either a free day or a flex day in that I clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up in other areas of my life. So I don't schedule everything on a Friday. You guys have to come up with your own plan. And then I just want to invite you to commit to your time block. Commit to this time blocking routine for at least a month. At least a month for 30 days. Between now and the, maybe the middle of February, commit to blocking out some time, knowing that you're going to invite or going to do customer care calls or whatever it is. You know, on Monday nights at 830 Central, you're doing a Mission Possible call. And we have so many other things available. So those are some tips how to protect your time. And then we have some more about how to use your time wise. Yes. Okay. We could put using your time wisely into four categories. One would be planning, one would be our customers, 
team, and then ourself. So planning. You know, I learned a long time ago to take Sunday evening to just get quiet and plan my calendar and, and make sure my calls are in place. And I knew exactly what I was going to be doing for the next week. And who were those people that I was going to be reaching out to? I reviewed my memory jogger. Who did I need to move on that memory jogger? Maybe I needed to follow up with them. Or who am I adding to my memory jogger? Who are the 10 people I'm going to reach out to this week? So tr take quiet time on a Sunday evening or whenever it works best for you and review that and prepare yourself for, the, for your upcoming week. Then the next thing we want to reach out to new potential customers. Who's on your memory jogger? You know, we have this new 90-day plan um, action plan that is just really got a lot of people motivated and our freedom revolution. So who are those new potential customers and new individuals that you're going to be reaching out? Start closing the loop on anyone that you've had a conversation with. And maybe you need to move them to that next step. You know, where are they on your memory jogger again? Do you need to send them a YouTube video? Do you need to reach out to them to do a connection call? What, where, where do you need to move them to that next action that needs to be taken care of? And then, of course, our customer care. That is a major priority. We, you know, we love our customers. We, they love their Juice Plus. We want to keep lifting them up, encouraging them, reaching out to them. Let know that we have new products, uh, maybe new activities or events that are happening in the areas that they live. And they just love to hear from you every time you pick up that phone or you reach out to them. Reach out to new potential team members. You know, we want to continue to grow. We want to touch other lives. We want to let them know that we have an amazing opportunity. And I'm telling you, these Freedom Launch calls are just touching lives. I just talked to Carol. In fact, she's doing a call right now. And she said, this is so easy. I've worked on this for 10 minutes, and I have seven yeses. And that just, it just fills my heart with joy, but she is just on fire for doing more of these calls. So closing the loops on anyone that you've had a business conversation with, you know, you've, you've opened the doors, you're sharing our opportunity, be sure that you're moving them to the next step. Get your upline NMD on a call with them, extremely important. And then we have our wonderful team of distributors, we want to continue to love on them, connect with them, find out, you know, make sure their why is still in place. Do they need a training call? Be sure they're connected. If you have a Facebook group or, an, or your email group, however you're connecting, make sure they're on Voxer. Be sure that your, cust your distributor care is in place as well. And then the last one is that personal development. You want to use your time wisely in developing your belief and, and just in developing yourself to be the person that you are designed to be. Back to you, Sharon. Thanks, BJ. And I just want to, as we're cl this closing here in a few thoughts, remember our highest impact activity is talking to people, building relationships. I know we talk about numbers a lot. We do want to reach out to as many people as possible, but you don't want to do it in such a way that you overlook relationships. So I just want to encourage you, high impact activity is talking to people. And I'm going to say new people. We sometimes get in the trap of talking to the same people, the same team members, the same people, and we don't reach out to new people, build new relationships, new connections. The best way I know to do that is do stuff that you love. If you like to walk, walk, do, join a walking club. If you like to paint, be with a bunch of people who paint or knit or dance or whatever it is that you all like to do, go do that with great joy, garden clubs, whatever it is, and you're gonna meet like-minded people that wanna, you wanna hang with. So find something you like to do, be in that activity, in talking to new people, conversation, and our hours that we spend in front of our computer are really um, maybe necessary, but that's not where you want to spend most of your time. I had somebody say to me one time, and I laughed so hard, I cried. She, and this is a rep. She said, 
I've been watching my virtual office and nothing is happening. <laughs> happening. Okay. Nothing is going to happen when you watch the virtual office. It's only when you go out there and talk to people. Go out there. If you're at soccer, you know what? You can work on your virtual office there or whatever. You can talk to people wherever you are. And daily method of operation. This is really what we've been talking about tonight is creating a daily method of operation that will serve you well. And if you've never done that before, you can get a calendar, print off a calendar, get your day timer, passion planner, whatever it is, and create a daily method of operation. There is something about routine that's comforting. And even when we get out of routine, like we just had the Christmas season, um, you know, we got out of routine for a little bit, but it was so good to come back into a routine and know Mondays and Thursdays, I do certain things, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I do other things and follow that routine. And you know what? Relationships is what it's all about. So I just want to encourage you guys and what you're doing. And DJ mentioned the Freedom Revolution, Revolution calls that we're doing, launch calls, Freedom Revolution calls right now. I cannot say enough about their value and their impact to build your teams, build belief, and create momentum in what you're doing. So if, you're, if you haven't done them, start inviting. There's enough going on. Uh, we're going to have some going on for our teams on a regular basis um, that you guys can plug into. We'll be letting you know each week what they are. But what we do consistently builds upon things. And then success is the sum of small efforts repeated diligently day in and day, and day out. And action is the key. That the key the foundation is the key is the foundational key to all success. And the key to success is also this to start before you're ready. Now I'm gonna say that another way. Ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. <laughs> it's so true. We want to know every little perfect way to do something. Guys, just go out there and do it. Make a mess campaign if you need to. But really, the key to success is to start something before you're ready. And I am going to be a testimony to that. My entire 34 years in this business is stepping out of comfort zone, doing things that I haven't done before. And I mean, many of you could say that. Finally, most every successful person begins with two beliefs. The future can be better than the present, and I have the power to make it be that way. And guys, I cannot say enough about getting in the ring, going out there every single day, and touching and changing people's lives. At the end of the day, you will feel so much better about yourself and with the difference that we've made. So thank you, BJ, for joining me and sharing this call. Uh, BJ has created a document that we will post on our Mission Possible Facebook page for you guys, some of the notes from this if you need a review. And I think, have you, are you also, uh, BJ, inclu including Stacy? where'd you go, Stacy Whitmer's? Um, yes. In your time wisely? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there was a super piece at the Pajama Regional that one young woman did, a brand new national marketing director did that blew us away. So she's included that. So that'll be a resource if you guys haven't seen that or you didn't uh, connect to the Pajama Regional. So I like, oh, and next week we are so excited. Another little key piece that we're going to share with you from the Pajama Regional is be a master asker, a.k.a. get better at asking questions. We're really good at telling, but how good are we at asking and connecting? So be a master asker. And in two weeks, have you all seen this on Voxer? We're going to have Ron Jakovac and Dave Rankin join us. woo -hoo. And they're going to join us. We better, we better blow the doors off for that one and talk about residual income. And I can't think of two better guys that can throw that out to us. Right, guys? So, all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good, good night. Blessings on you. Have a great week. And we'll see you next Monday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome.